George couldn't recall ever seeing the man with the yellow hat looking like this. He was usually calm, cool, and wearing a yellow hat. Oh, here he comes. Hello? Good morning, come on in. Ready as promised. Ah, uh, it was worth living without it for three long days. <laughs> I'd rather carry it myself, George. You're not gonna wear your hat? No, I, I wanna keep it perfect till tonight. We're going to the opening of the new planetarium dome. Thanks. Uh, let's get home before anything happens to my perfect clean hat. Maybe he needed to pull harder. <laughs> or maybe it had to be cut off. George had forgotten that the last time he used his safety scissors was to cut his strawberry jam and banana sandwich. <laughs> it was only a small smudge. All he had to do was clean it off. <laughs> this stiff brush got the grill sparkling like new every time, and the grill got dirtier than the hat. <laughs> He may have scrubbed too hard. When I get back, we're going right to the planetarium. George had to do something fast. George realized that no hat he made could ever be the man's yellow hat. But the hole didn't look so bad when there was yellow paper inside. That was it. He didn't need a new hat. He needed to patch the hole. <laughs> the paper looked good, but something made of more hatty material would look better. <laughs> something like a yellow sock. George, did Hunley drop by for a shower, or is one of our towels running away from home? <laughs> George, where's my hat? <laughs> Gnocchi, don't touch my clean hat. It has to be perfect for tonight. George, why does my hat have a tail and a hole? George couldn't believe he didn't think of that. You see? It looks great. All right, we've got to go. Did you take a bath? <laughs> Fixed hat, fresh suit, clean monkey. I feel like there's something we forgot to do. A cornucopia of exotic comestibles. Blueberries! Alicia! Blueberries!
strawberries are my favorite bush based fruit. Come on, George. It, it looks like you all forgot the county sprout rules. Uh, rule number one. Never eat any plant that you're not 100% certain is safe. And that means... Consulting the edible plants guidebook? Um, no, it means getting an okay from an adult. Right. Rule number two. Plants are living things. You can kill or hurt them if you're too rough. So don't pull on them and don't break any branches. <laughs> Come on. Why is the screen flickering? Either the Earth is off its axis, or I forgot to charge the batteries. Okay. George, can you climb that tree and see where we are? <laughs> and Bill... Bill? Bill, where are you going? Don't worry. I've got my handy backup compass. This way, folks! Bill? A, a sprout never leaves the trail. That, 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 that's rule number three. Bill! Oh, our excitement's really growing because we don't know where we're going. In this direction, green. In this direction, a path. <gasps> <laughs> George couldn't believe what he was seeing. Someone was trying to break that branch. Somebody was not being a sprout. Oh no, this man was wrecking a tree. Whoa. Hey, are you a monkey? Cool. I always wanted a monkey, but my mother said no. George had to do something, and fast. This tree was in trouble. Hey, return the headgear, monkey. George didn't mean for the hat to get wet. Or the man. But George couldn't wait around. He had to check on that tree. George wished he could think of a way to get the branches back on the tree. He needed something sticky. Really sticky. Like... Mud. George! Oh, thank goodness I found you! I'm sorry I left you in that tree. <laughs> oh, Dr. Greenbean, nice to see you. <laughs> sorry we're late. We've had a rough day. Tell me about it. First this monkey ran off with my hat, and now my tree lopper has vanished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> What's going on? Who put mud on this? Uh, George? <laughs> ah, so Dr. Greenbean was cutting some branches and you thought he was hurting the tree. Ah, <laughs> uh, you should have asked. Oh, wait, <laughs> you're a monkey. Well, anyway, this is called pruning. You make a careful cut, and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. Hey, I got it! Uh, Mr. Sproutmaster, according to this, you're going the exact wrong... Wait, you're going the right way. Never mind, proceed. Go! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, good morning, George. I'm going to sleep five more minutes, okay? No! Yes, Harry! This here 
roller coaster whips and snaps your round hairpin turns at 70 miles per hour. So come on down to Zany Island and ride the Turbo Python 3000. That's Captain's orders. Arr! Everyone was excited about riding the Turbo Python 3000. Except the man with the yellow hat. He was afraid of roller coasters and remembered the first and last time he rode a roller coaster. It was so long ago, he was just the boy with the yellow hat. <laughs> and since that day, roller coasters upset him. Okay, I'm a grown man. I have no reason to fear a roller coaster. No! Uh, enjoy the ride, George. Whew. I am thirsty. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. Huh? Uh, you have to be as tall as this sign to ride. And, uh, you're not. <laughs> That's it, honey. Go to sleep. Nothing makes you grow like a good sleep. Huh? And I want you to grow up to be big and healthy. All this growing made George tired. If sleep made you grow, he could do two things at once. <laughs> sleep made George grow a lot at least in his dream. I'm sorry. You can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. You're too big. Oh. Oh. George didn't grow as big as he had in his dream, but he grew enough to be five licorice whips tall. <laughs> Seeing Betsy lose her hat reminded the man with the yellow hat of that fateful day. My hat! I lost my hat! No! <laughs> That's it. I I'm not afraid of roller coasters. I'm afraid of losing my yellow hat. Your hat is safe, Betsy! <laughs> what with all these sour faces? I don't like sour faces at me park, you know. Oh, hi there, Captain Zany. You see, this monkey's too short to ride the Turbo Python 3000. Too short? Bah! He's not too short. Monkeys don't grow very big. That's why we have the... You must be this tall if you're a monkey side. <sighs> you can ride, George, and I'm coming with you. But first, give me all your licorice. Huh? <laughs> What do you think? Very impressive. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it, George. Oh, we should go. The rocket presentation is starting soon. Are you coming with us, George? Or do you want to stay here and watch the clock? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, if it's okay with Professor Wiseman, it's okay with me. Now, if you want to see the little people play again, move the minute hand once around to 12. <laughs> Have fun. How long does it take to build a clock like that? Oh, about three years. Oh, that reminds me. I'll be right back. George, be a good little monkey. Exactly. George wanted to see the little people again. That looked like George's friend, Compass, the almost homing pigeon. Because when all the other homing pigeons honed in on the statue, he almost made it. It was Compass, all right. George was happy to see his friend the pigeon. He couldn't fix the minute hand, and that's what made the little people play. George remembered there was another way into the clock, the back. Take something apart. It's a good idea to pay attention to what went where. Where could George find out how a clock's parts go together? The library. Of course. He hopes studying the big clock would show him exactly what to do with the little clock. Glad that noise had stopped. Yeah! Whose tools are these? Okay, and this goes there. Now, you see? What a beautiful clock. Did you make it? <laughs> I know everything about clocks, but not one thing about understanding monkey. <laughs> George, how did this heavy metal toolbox get so... How'd you enjoy the show, George? Aren't all the different breeds fascinating? <laughs> Would you like to see the winners up close? <laughs> George got a big surprise. Because when he actually looked at the big ones, and the small ones, crazily hairy ones. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> he thought the dog show was great. Have you ever seen so many unforgettable dogs before? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like you had fun. I hope he wasn't too much trouble. He was no trouble at all. Wow, that's great to hear. Gotta run. See you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye bye. So, you like the dog show, huh? <laughs> George wanted to tell the man about all the unforgettable dogs he saw. <laughs> but he only remembered three. It's okay, you can tell me later. Oh, would you do me a big favor and mail these letters? <laughs> I made a sandwich if you're hungry. And when I'm done, I want to hear about all the dogs. George was afraid he wouldn't be able to tell the man more. Because no matter how hard he tried, he could only remember three. Oh. Huh? There was only one solution. But no matter how many times George looked at those dogs, he couldn't remember more than three. Oh. There was obviously no way a monkey could remember them all. Attention! Uh, could I see the owners of the winners over here, please? Briskly! Briskly, briskly, briskly! There were three big, three small, and three hairy dogs. George, I'm home. Oh, Hunley, <laughs> what are you doing here? in here. George remembered all the dogs. So where did these three and three and three nine dogs come from? <laughs> I'm just so happy they're all back and all safe. Well, everyone's back where they belong. <laughs> huh? Hundley! <laughs> Stop the car! Hey! Hundley's in there! Come back! Oh, you want to buy two more? <laughs> You're missing two. <laughs> How do I know you didn't eat them? <laughs> <laughs> you most certainly haven't eaten any chocolate. Boy, you sure have nice teeth. <laughs> Pick any two you want. Sorry I shortchanged you. I put some of these boxes together at home and my cat distracts me. <laughs> Oh, 
dear. I need to pick up more stock, but I can't just leave. Hey, would you mind watching the counter? <laughs> You're obviously extremely honest, and I've hardly had any business all day. All you have to do is watch the chocolates while I'm gone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can you please prepare my boxes? I'm going to miss my bus. I'd like a white one, or a red one, or uh, maybe another blue one. George wanted to stop the interruptions so he could work on this box problem. Oh, are you giving out free samples? Gimme, 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 mommy, gimme! My order, please. Hello? <laughs> George just wanted to keep everyone quiet so he could think. Ooh, free samples. We sold 25 candies and gave away 190. <laughs> I didn't make enough money to buy more ingredients. I can't afford to make any more chocolates. Huh? Once these are sold, that's it. I'm out of business. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's okay. You didn't realize. All George could do was go home. It would be a long, sad walk to the apartment. <sighs> hey, it's a rhombus. Monkey? George felt so bad, he couldn't even try one chocolate. <laughs> Look at those. I have never seen blue candy before. These are amazing. First thing tomorrow, George, we are getting some candy. George didn't think Kaylee would be too happy to see him again. George wanted to avoid seeing Kaylee without seeming obvious. <laughs> oh, George, you don't need a tie. Don't you want to buy some candy? <laughs> uh, maybe we should have come earlier, huh? Oh, it's you! Hey, can you give me a hand? <laughs> The free samples were a huge hit. Everyone's coming back to buy more. <laughs> Let's get to work. <laughs> we're nearly sold out, and I have tons of advance orders. Now I can go buy more ingredients. George, you are a sorting whiz. When we get home, you can organize the closets. <laughs> well... I'd better go get those ingredients. Uh, you can watch the counter, right? Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, what? I need two dozen mints, 15 pinks, 11 whites, and 16 boxes. And then it starts to get complicated. 13 blue ones, 8 green ones, 1 black and white one in however many boxes. George. Details, 4 reds, 5 George. white, 6 blues, 19 purple dot triangly ones, and 53 cylinders evenly distributed in small boxes. Then one of Tracy taught her chicks to walk tall and be proud like a chicken. Oh! 
It was time for a bath because, in being proud like a chicken, neatness counts. George? Would you come here, please? <laughs> the neighbors will be here soon for our monthly game lunch, so I need you to run to the store. <laughs> We're out of toothpicks. It's not a party if you don't pick up small food with toothpicks. Uh -huh. Oh, we need marshmallows, too. And a new deck of cards. You, uh, you got some jelly on the old deck. <laughs> so take this list to Ada and Luke's general store, okay? <laughs> that sounded like a chicken in trouble. <laughs> George could see those six chicks needed to be rescued. <laughs> now all the chicks had to do was walk across. <laughs> Bridge wasn't chick safe yet. <laughs> what could he do to make it safer? <laughs> that bridge had sides made from triangle shapes. George suggested they cross one at a time, in case the bridge wasn't strong enough to hold them all. But the bridge was plenty strong. It even held a whole hand. A job well done. George could now rush home with the marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards. Maybe not straight home. <laughs> that must be some party if you need more marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards already. <laughs> now it's officially a party. <laughs> All righty. We're going to play goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, come see what the chickens built. They are geniuses. We better start looking at colleges. And that's how the Rankins College Fund for Gifted Chickens got its start. I believe so, Your Highness. Your Highness? What? You are in the presence of Her Royal Majesty, the Princess of Bratsphere. So now, we bow. Wow! A real princess in our lobby! And now, we oh. leave. Uh, hey! Wait a minute! <laughs> you can't walk away with Hunley! Oh! We got carried away. This may be a descendant of the royal dachshund of Bratsvia. Huh? A royal doggy. I always knew he was special. He? We must adjourn to the royal quarters and complete the test. Only if I come with you. You're both more than welcome, especially the fuzzy <laughs> monkey. <laughs> <laughs> he weighs much more than a helmet. He is not royal. Uh, 
shouldn't we weigh him without the monkey? <laughs> They're the same! He is royalty, beyond question. <laughs> You're one special dog, Hunley. Not Henley. His name is Lord Percival Barkington the 15th. Percival Barkington? <laughs> hmm. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and now Lord Percival can take his rightful place in his new home. Ooh, wow. New home? <laughs> you want us to live here? Not you. Just Lord Percival. Hunley? <laughs> without me? Was he really four stripes long? Huh? 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 Oh. That guy must have had some strong neck muscles to wear this. They weighed the same, too. Hundley matched all the measurements. George never noticed that mark on Hundley before today. <laughs> it smelled like jelly. Percival, are you all right? There was no time to look for soap. <laughs> Is something wrong? Fuzzy monkey. Do I get him, too? Uh, no, Your Highness. Now he will go. <laughs> Wait! Look! Lord Percival's royal birthmark has vanished! Impossible! That would mean... He's, he's not, not Lord, Lord Percival, Percival after, after all! all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we made a mistake. Huntley must return to his old life. You hear that, boy? Don't be too sad, Huntley. <laughs> well, don't be too happy either. Please accept our gift of the Royal Bratsfee and Leek and Gravy Hoagie. <laughs> a dog's lobby was his castle. And for Hundley, even better than a real castle. Ta-da! George wondered, who were these incredible fruit balancers? Zucchinis! <laughs> Piscelli! Giorgio, these are my friends, the famous zucchinis. <laughs> we can buy to order food for our rehearsal. Our show is tonight. But now, all he wanted was to be an amazing balancing zucchini. Want to deliver this to the zucchinis for me? <laughs> Aha. Maybe you like to see them again because you want to be a zucchini, eh? Uh huh. which gives us the strength to perform our amazing feats! <laughs> I think he wants to join us. 
It's not that easy. It takes lots of practice to do things like us. Balance requires total control. I never sneeze unless a... A cat! Leo's allergic to cat hair, and sneezing is very bad for his balance. It would wreck our show! George was proud to be a starter zucchini. He gave out every flyer. And that night, everyone he knew came to the show. Everyone. Gnocchi just wanted to watch. She found a quiet place where she couldn't possibly bother anyone. Okay, just relax, Chef. We'll do everything. This is like a dream come true. Gnocchi ran to Chef Biscetti whenever she saw him. So why should now be any different? Is that a... Uh, uh... Oh, it's Gnocchi. Leo, don't sneeze. I... I... can't... can't... Help <gasps> <me. laughs> Gnocchi, go with your show. <laughs> this was just like that mop. So George shifted his hands. George was all day, practicing to be in the show. <gasps> we made it! <laughs> After a sneeze break, the show went on and was a great success. And when it was over, of their great balance, we voted to make George and Chef Piscetti official zucchinis. Oh! <laughs> and you're welcome to practice with us anytime. So that was all real? Oh, I'm glad I didn't know. I, I would have worried. Ah, nothing to worry about. George is a natural. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe he should stick to the high wire. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>